I'm pumped about finally being able to do this. Not just about putting this car on a dyno, but to actually be the dyno pilot. No, this isn't mine. I'm at Matt Russell's shop. He owns the dyno. And he's just as curious about what this Elantra is going to do on it as I am. Matt didn't seem too worried about its gremlin-like ill temperament that seems to infect everything that you connect to it, or even about the nut behind the wheel. Nope. He said I could even fly it. Wow, cool. So we're going to use all of this car's cool toys on someone else's cool toy today and see what happens. What's this do? What's that do? Hey, don't push that. For those of you who are new here, the car's a 1992 Hyundai Elantra that was plucked out of a junkyard with a forklift. The engine's a 6-bolt, 2-liter, 30 overboard, non-turbo Gallant block with the generic stock non-turbo pistons and a 1.6-liter head. That's a 4G63. This yielded a measured static compression of almost 9.9 to 1. Its only major aftermarket parts are used DSM HKS cams, 264-272, 750cc FIC injectors, a 3-inch exhaust cutout, and an AEM water methanol kit. The turbo is a $224 eBay turbo that has outlived two different engines and still going strong. It's basically a big 16G housing with a 20G wheel stuffed into it. Estimated to flow between 38 to 42 pounds per minute. Those of you who know what that means, that's very telling. Yeah. This car's progenitor, Jamie, is here. Our good friend, Abe. Abe has a history with this car that predates me, too. If you're an Evo kind of guy on Facebook, you already know Matt. Rawad even made it out of the house. He's a jet turbine engineer with nothing better to do than to observe this spectacle on a Friday night. And now that you're here, we're all in good company. Welcome. I'm glad you made it. After we get this figured out, my first point of order is to see what this car makes with the exhaust cut out and closed, the water methanol kit off, and pump gas. We're picking up right exactly where we left off with my butt tuning on the street. I'm not going to follow my hands around filming everything that I touch this time. This video is not going to play out anything at all like my regular speedy format. Well, I mean, I'm going to do a little bit here and there, but it pretty much speaks for itself. It's an important part of this car's story. I came to learn how to run a dyno and to get data to help move this project forward. So essentially, I'm calibrating my butt dyno tonight. Here we go. I'm going to keep the narration down to a minimum here, except for where I have to fill in the blanks or give some analysis. This video is for science. The dyno is a land and sea dyno mite. And those of you familiar with that brand know that they tend to read a little bit low, but there's correction factors that can be adjusted to match other brands of dynos just the same as the other brands of dynos also have. I mean, they, they all do that. This one's also equipped with a weather station, though, to ensure consistency despite atmospheric changes. Now, let's get started with some failing so that we can achieve some success tonight. After getting her all strapped down, we fought with getting a clean RPM signal. Observe. Cause you, yeah, I was gonna say it could have spun a little. It it sounded yeah. There's I think some yeah, was, yeah. It, uh, could she saw uh, all of a sudden got up there. Yeah, I think the main thing was it unloaded the oh, dyno. Yeah, it, the, it lost the spark pickup. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is the wastegate pointing down? No, pointing right at the straps actually. Yeah, that's not but bad. they're not hot. And I'll still put something. 
just a... You got a piece of cheap metal? Yeah, a little tiny spritz of oil from your sending unit on your filter housing. Again? Yeah. That eighth inch. I do believe we're out of... Uh, yeah, the way that's bending around, I think we're out of the line of fire. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's close. Let me yeah. shut this off. On the next one, we'll try to back for a big oil, maybe. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Is it? Yeah, that little. Um, do you need to know what pin it is? Probably. Or I can just back for a little fine pin. Wait, I got it here. I got Did the it? laptop. So are these low impedance or high impedance steel injectors? Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah he's still doing pretty good. Oh, talk. Actually, well, the resistor box. box this morning. Yeah. So we can probably just back break yeah. the end yeah. about it. the oh, injector. Because that gives us a pulse. Oh, it's shit. all these. That's right up alley. Yeah, yeah. fire it up though. That way when I plug yeah. it in, I can tell yeah. if it uh, makes any kind of like, change. On high impedance stuff, sometimes it doesn't work with me. Any bets? <laughs> Any bets if we get a good third gear pull, what it'll, what it'll make it wastegate pressure? Uh, 320 wheel. 320 wheel and wastegate pressure? Well, was it 16G? Big 16. Big or 16. 20G, but it's big 16G oh. equivalent. Oh, man. We never asked what wastegate pressure was. Yeah, wastegate pressure on well, that's probably 16, 17 PSI. Yeah, that's what it creeps to. I'm going to stick to my original. I'm going to say 320 wheel. Okay, 320. Oh, 320. About 300? Yeah. All right. I'm optimistic here. All right, I'm I want to go with 291. 291. <laughs> All right. I'll right in the middle of the pack. I don't want to. I don't want to be the. I don't want to do the prices right. What are the logs showing up? <laughs> Three thirty. Oh, okay. Right, I'd rather. That. I'd rather so, see a lot more. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, that could be real spin. So we'll see. I'd rather see a lot more. I'm not a hooker. I should start getting in the habit of getting my key out of my pocket before I get in the car. Hello, <laughs> yeah. What's that? It's got oh, it's probably you unplugging it. What the wire? Yeah, that was as I pulled it out of the connector. That's really bizarre. It would be the skinny black wire, possibly. That's a different coil. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna go for in this one. The red one is power, and then the thick black one is ground. All right, you see if we have anything there.
I say when I when I got in here when it won't. It's not, it's, it, like that's that? not correct. It's 250, 250 horsepower, two, I was like right. about 210 torque. I yep. was right. I was right. I was. <laughs> Here you go. That no. It's I think it was because plug I was out. On, the, on the coil. It was also, I took five thousandths off of every one of those plugs. Uh, that so made the difference. They spread yeah. out a little bit. I bet you my log looks cleaner. Yeah, my log is cleaner. Oh my goodness, their fuel ratios are fantastic. I'm within a half a point. Off my targets, and it's uh, it it's running rich. Uh, we got something. We're we're definitely missing something in the middle. Yeah. Well, wait, how many RPMs is that? So from four grand, it looks like you made your probably big boost at four. Yeah, peak torque would have been down there. At four, so, at four grand is not peak boost. Did it boost creep? It's boost creeping. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. It boost creeps all the way to uh, looks like 19.2, 19.4 by the yeah, end of it. So that's what we're seeing in the graph then. So once you turn it up, the torque will stand up here and then it'll start to roll back out. Your okay. torque climbed all the way to the top. That means you've got... You know, okay. Yeah, we can stand it way on up down there. Probably some fuel tuning there. This was probably just boost, boost fuel. So now that you've got a good base there, look, you can Look at see the air fuel ratio. Oh yeah, right on. And I butt tuned line. this. So what I always like to do after that is take take a degree of timing out for my second base run, or two degrees, and see if it's a drastic drop. If it, if it drops drastically when I take timing out, then I'll know that I'm, you know, a little ways away from my threshold as to where you know you get minimal gain for putting timing in. But, I, you do you know how little timing this car has? I would assume it doesn't have much in it. Like five degrees at, at, five. One, at one. So normally like on that white Evo over there, that, that just has cams in it and a turbo. I'll probably be somewhere around like 10, 11 degrees at about 30 pounds up top. That's stock compression though. On pump gas. At how many degrees? Play it again. Close to 30 pounds. I'll probably have 10 degrees, 10 degrees. up top. Yeah. See, I'm getting pump gas. Five degrees, yeah. and what's the dude through the middle? Look right there, got two little blips to knock. Oh yeah, you know, but it, it, that's nothing really. That's 0.3 degrees, I think. But it's not even showing any. But 0.4, so that's one count. What kind of timing is in it right there? Um, it's pulling 6.8 degrees. 6.8, and that's going to be. It was at 7.1 when it knocked, and then it pulled it to 6.8. So six degrees, and then if I go up from there, you know, there's one spot where it knocked and it's five seven. So like I said, five degrees, it's about the best I can do is at its maximum advance. Yeah. And that's, you know, I don't know if that knock is real or not. I don't think it is. Because the way the plugs look, they look cold, low on timing. Yeah. You can see the timing mark on yours. I'm tempted, to put, band, a I'm band, tempted band. to put a degree in it and see what it does. Yeah, see what, this will tell you better than anything. <clears throat> but the band on your spark plugs weren't clear. It was faint, had fuel on it where the electric wasn't. It had been hot at one point mm -hmm. while those plugs were in here. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime recently, the, the electric hasn't been hot enough to to mark a band on it. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing on. Can you give it a degree? Yeah, you can try that. See what you put it. Yeah, you'll know if it likes it or not. Normally, you know, another sign of it being low on timing is soup, like after four grand, how the torque is kind of jagged a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes, Sometimes you can torque from the low timing. You can the timing and it'll smooth out the power graph. Huh. Yeah, that was that was a lot better on the start on that last run too, where you got it loaded up a little and then it ran. I always like to start start my pulls with load. Yep. Yep. You heard it load that time. Yeah. I was a little too quick the first time. Oh, shit. So there's my baseline. That's wastegate pressure baseline. We're going to add a degree of timing. You see what the misfire run looks like compared to that. Oh, yeah. 
your misfire run follows the same curve and then it drops off the two cylinders. So it actually followed the, you know, it was on the same path through the bottom. And then yeah. It just like dropped. Making a lot more power. <laughs> Oh heck yeah! When, when when you got them all firing, it matters. Yeah, it was worth 90 <laughs> foot pounds of torque for it to miss fire. Not bad. There we go. Now it's programming. When you adjusted the the, the spark plugs. Yeah, I think it helped. Yeah. All right. So I'll put it. Need to get in the habit of checking to make sure auto works before. I I gave it a degree of timing. We'll fill up the water methanol bottle before we leave just to have some fun. That whole, all that has to be completely retuned. Yeah. And when I do that, I'm gonna open the, uh, open up the, the uh, cutout. So we'll have some fun, make some real noise. I'll be curious. Uh, I'll be curious. Another run, maybe another just baseline, is to open the cutout and see what the difference. Is with an open Without changing place. anything. Yeah. Just to see what it, if it robs you. Or, okay. I'm sure it'll make it that more torque is full up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is you think I'm running it maybe too lean from what I should be at that RPM and that cell on the air fuel table what is, what, what's your mixture at right there it's uh, 10 it's asking for 10 6 and it's at 10 2 that's rich rich I know but why would it be knocking what wide band do you have LC2 so the adjustable I can also if you want it I could stick the other wide band in the tail button so you can see but I mean that's true it's a brand new sensor uh, the sensor doesn't even have 100 miles on it yet Let's see what the difference is between the this pole oh, and here. the last one sorry here. It sounded clean yeah it sounded better. It sounded like it really liked that timing I agree the apes up there too That was one degree of everything above 3,500 RPMs. So it didn't care for it. Uh, if anything, it actually lost yeah. a little bit, right? Well, about the same. And then up top, it actually... What? At very tip top, it made a tad yeah. more. Right under that, it made a little less through there. So that would lead me to pull a few degrees out of it. Out like, of do it. you have the base timing set up on this? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Watch this. It definitely oh. didn't like it. That's it. Well, sounded like it did, but it, sound, it definitely did. Look! Mm. Look at this. We're gonna take another degree. Yeah, I'd take two out. There's two, so it's one down from where it was. Yeah. So if we don't see a drop in power, then we know it needs more, more out of it. You know, sometimes you get too much timing in it, and it'll make less power before mm -hmm. it knocks. Yeah. If you get past that threshold. So I did right. like it right there. 
off boost. It did like the timing. It made it more. It made it. Yeah. A lot happier off boost. Oh, there's definitely boost there. Yeah. This thing. Oh well, I guess in the light boost. <laughs> I was gonna when say. You first stepped into it. It yeah. did spool the chain. It made it made boost faster. Yeah, this thing spools like. Yeah, quick. The, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. The, the thin line is the boost, and the, the thin line is the new line, and the dark line is the last run. So his changes that he made, you can oh. see the difference between the two runs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm at um. When the dyno ran start, I'm at. Right as the dyno started to sweep, I'm making five psi. Yeah. So in that area, it actually did like your degree a little bit. Yeah. yeah I think very up top past 6,500, it liked it a little bit up there. Okay. So I could probably afford to yeah, add some timing. I could probably add a degree of timing to the 3,500 and yeah. be in good shape. Mm -hmm. And that will make and it then, feel more responsive. And yeah. A little better. Yeah. Yep. Definitely not the I mean, change. Uh, not, not what I was anticipating. I was expecting it to make a little more on the well it did make a couple more so here at 3500 where i just took two out what i'm going to do is put one back yep get you back where you started we're going to reprogram that one a lot like the first one all it's going to do is show us the difference in where we flipped wait we took we added in we took an extra one out never mind yeah so there's one out yep. much smoother it looks. I smell your converter more and made more heat. Yeah. Yeah. But it made less pretty much everywhere it looks like. Oh it's getting hotter. Two PSI. You made less boost? Two PSI less. Decreasing the so, uh, that, decreasing that would, the timing. That, that would uh, indicate that it became more efficient. Right? I mean, yeah. Less boost, more efficient. It's still a half point rich. Pretty much everywhere. So, I mean, it lost from 4,500 up to all the way to the top. It lost. Yeah, but it's rich as yeah, look at it. It's uh, a half point all the way across the board uh, from what it's expecting. Do you think well, I should... That could, that could knock the power down. Yeah. Whenever you got too much timing in it and it's rich... Make well, opening it. the cutout is going to lead it out because it's more air is going to flow through it. So let's do a backup run of it just like this. See Put what it does. the open at the same timing. Huh? Put the cutout open at the same timing. Yeah. See if it handles it safely. Make some 
noise now. Let's wake the neighborhood.
picked up something down low for uh, cleaning it out. Nope, it's almost the same thing. Picked up a little bit right there, kind of yeah. smoothed out that dip. That's at 5,000, so that, yeah, that's true. And so it could be like... See what happened on the, on the are log. You, are you letting out right at 7? Um, set just a little past it. Yeah, so it could What's be 100 or 200 it? RPMs off. Okay. Just to beware. I've been watching it by that one. Yeah. It could be, like I say, 100 to 200 RPMs off. You can see where you lifted at 7, and then yeah. it says you lifted at 7. It looks like I might be able to... Maybe... Maybe pull something. Because it's still a half point rich, and there's no knock. Yeah. So, yeah I'd be curious to see what it does closer to that 11 o. There was that, what, one hit of knock at... See, it's down here... When it crosses 4,200, it starts going bad. So 4,500 is where I need to adjust it. 4,500 is where it's rich. Yep. Which is exactly what it shows on your on log that. there. Yep. So we're going to take that down another notch. That's just one damn cell. I don't want to do another pass just for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to this thing. All right. So 4,500 is a little rich. And up here, right in the middle of this... So 5250, that's between. Really, it's rich everywhere compared to what we usually run them. On pump gas, oh, it'd be totally. like an 11. Totally. But it's asking for that. Yeah. So if we, were to go the, yeah, if we were to go to the other table, we could probably mess with the air fuel ratio there. The airflow counts aren't, aren't perfect, and I think that's where we're having problems right now. Yeah. So that one's too high. I bet you adjusting the one above it to 102.5 would be a better move. Because you don't know exactly where in the cell it's sampling from. And that first one above it. Yeah. Hang on it. Work with me here. Oh, I'm hitting option. Oh, like a dumbass. I think that would be... Actually, I'm just going to take it straight to 102. And up here, above 6, it's right on. So I don't want to mess yeah. with anything up here. That's all, that's all good. But, boost... I swear, I felt like it was... Look, What's it doing right back. here with our... Boost came back. Back oh, to 20 yeah, PSI did, huh? again. Do I have thing of oil in here? Oh, yeah, it looks like you're spinning it to about 72. So that, that whole chart's probably about 100 off. Oh, I did spin it to 72 this time. I went a little past 7,000. Oh, yeah, no, actually, I see it on 72. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty close. But see, I got a little knock here at the end. So where do you see the RPM? The and, and so I have a feeling that if I were to go into the octane table, track that, it's over here in 10.8. I bet you this needs to be like 10.6. You think so? Yep. We'll see what it does. I did option again. Come on, shift. That's too much. You'll be able to tell if it loses power. You'll be able to tell. Okay. Really, there's no no rich is really too rich till you start losing power. Then you know you're too rich. Okay. Programming. I think that's enough. That was, I mean, that's I not feel, very. Drastic. I feel like we learn more by doing two. Yeah, I agree. We're going to have to fill up that water methanol it's, it's, bottle soon. We're just going to have to do it. Yeah. car is very consistent. I agree. It makes a very a big identical looking graph every time. Huh? You got a bottle in the trunk? Oh, uh, yeah. You can, you can really hear it once it Don't fill it yet. Okay. Don't fill it yet. We'll, 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 we'll do it in a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, it's all soda. Uh -huh. Sauce here, a bottle of respect. Put some respect on it. <laughs> Put some respect on it. 2010? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, this is 92. <laughs> it's, yeah, this thing is 20 something years older. I'm surprised it's not writing freaking dino and grass and pencil. <laughs> dino and grass and pencil. <laughs> Have you seen old videos of like old miners?
This is gonna get nasty now. My dyno does read a little low too. It is, yeah. you know, an absorber, any absorber style dyno, I feel like reads lower than a inertia. <clears throat> oh yeah. I don't think I want to fill it all the way up because I'm gonna be taking it apart soon to add a solenoid to it. So it actually did. It actually did pick up all through the middle right there. Nice. I guess it liked the fuel. So I've got two different things going on here with the boost control. Uh, I got a disabled boost control. I've got it disabled stuff in first gear. One is that the water methanol failsafe disables my boost controller to make me run wastegate pressure no matter what the ECU is telling it to do. And the other is that I've disabled the ECU's ability to even control boost to begin with. We're doing third gear pulls, so it's supposed to follow the third gear map on the wastegate solenoid tab. I just have to turn it back on again. Enable boost control. Enabled. I've got 6% battery. Um. Can you do me a favor? Sure. Plug this into that thing on the wall. It's the uh, power here. No, it's a little oil sending unit where the big bitch NPT frame goes into the back. I'm not sure how much I trust it. Huh? I'm not sure how much I trust it. It's fine. All right, roll. Now, where was I? Oops, I got it stuck on the first gear duty cycles here. Let me fix that real quick. I have the ability to change boost levels for first, second, and third gear by RPMs with this engine management system. It uses the third gear map for fourth and fifth, unlike the Evos that have it for all six gears. Lucky devils. It's going to have a lot of boost. What? It's going to have a whole lot of boost. We'll see what happens. So here we go, same tune. So here we go, same tune. Now we've got it flowing.
it sprayed that time, but I've only got a pound or two of boost out of it for whatever reason. It's nowhere near what it should be doing right now. It's a half to a full point rich because of water methanol is an added fuel. And it made 273 horsepower at peak. No clue where my boost control went. So I'm going to do what I can for now, visiting the fuel tab to see if I can pull a percentage of the fuel out. This will help me figure out what I need to pull once I get the chance to retune it all. So I'm starting with about 7%. The data we're going to see isn't going to work exactly the same as it did in the street tuning video. The reason for this is because we pulled fuel from the sliders. Removing fuel with the sliders makes the estimated AFR read high or rise. Or in other words, it makes it deliver less fuel too, so really it makes both the measured and the estimated values rise. They're not going to come together doing it like this, they're only going to get further apart. But the actual measured air-fuel ratio is the one that we care about right now, just what the wideband says, so ignore the estimate. It's two to four tenths of a point leaner than where we were before, so we're headed in the right direction. Let's take more fuel out and see if we can put a bigger dent in that. So let's double it. Need to tell you something went wrong here you could hear it that's why i ended the pull at 6500 rpms i made one whole extra horsepower more before i let out of it but look at how straight that power curve is now the dyno switched to hold mode somehow and please feel free to blame the operator but it's not making any more boost than when i arrived here so i guess i just really need to go home and figure out why the factory dsm rubber hoses and the home fabricated parts that were cobbled together don't appear to be cutting it anymore and you know, some changes might finally be necessary there. I can hear my turbos working its little wheel off, but I'm still stuck at only 20 PSI. I think one of the cool things we observed was what happened when my cutout was opened and nothing else changed. We opened the cutout on the fifth pull. The pull right after I neutered the car by retarding the timing one degree across the board. The run where it lost 20 horsepower but became more efficient overall, so... I actually went from 231 on the fourth pull to 261 horsepower by doing that. It gained 30 horsepower by passing my exhaust. That's more than 10% of my car's total power output at wastegate pressure, just by flipping a switch. We all just learned something from this. Also, when the water methanol kit started spraying, we went from 254 to 273 horsepower. With no fuel tuning, that's 19 horsepower. Everyone on the internet says that there's no gain from using water methanol injection if you don't have fuel tuning. In fact, I've even said that. This is dyno evidence that there is a gain, provided that what's in your exhaust can use it to its benefit. In my case, 7% is not equal to zero, so busted. The best thing to come from this, though, I smoothed out the power curve and learned that taking 12% fuel out will put me roughly at 11.0 to 1 on my AFRs when the water methanol kit is spraying, and it's not knocking at that AFR. That's nice. That's what I needed to know, and that's what I needed to do. I had an absolute blast doing it. The dyno charts demonstrated actual gains from the cutout and from water methanol. All in all, I made 23 extra horsepower from where I started, and still at the same boost level, and a better understanding of what my next steps are going to be. 
It's awesome to have access to this resource to test my work and share it with everybody so that they can be part of my experience too. I'm grateful for everyone following on YouTube to find out what this Elantra does at wastegate pressure with these mods. If YouTubers who dyno test their work is something you appreciate, then please hit that like button. A lot of people keep secrets and I'm not one of them. It's only fitting that we chase the bigger numbers in a later video when I can actually turn my boost up. Thank you, Matt, Jamie, Abe, all of you on Patreon who have contributed to make this channel and this experience possible for me. This won't be the last time the Elantra flies on this dyno, but until it does, stay tubed.